What is going on, everybody? My name's Dakota, and welcome back to Coda's Cologne. Hopefully, everybody's doing fine. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. And so, for for this video, what we're going to be going over is we're going to be going over my absolute favorite fragrance of all time. I got into a conversation with somebody the other day, and it just turned into one of those to where that we got to talking about our favorites, and I have a unanimous favorite. Um, and for me, that favorite is going to be Parfums de Marly Herod. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so as I previously stated, uh, I was talking to a friend at work and we were talking about just favorite fragrances of all time. No questions asked. If you could only pick one, that, oh, let, me, let me fix you all here up real quick. If you could only pick one, oh, oh, now we're sideways. Oh no, hold on here. What is going on here? If you could only pick one for the rest of your life, it did not matter what it was, what would that all time favorite fragrance be? And for me, it was pretty simple. It was Parfums de Barley, Herod. Yes. So if you couldn't tell, I have a lot of Herods. I have a wee bit of an obsession with Herod, only because it's been reform. Uh, it's been reformulated once or twice, and to me, I don't pick up the changes on the reformulation as much as some of the other people do. Uh, it maybe is just like a tiny touch weaker. But to me, that didn't bother me because this fragrance was such a monstrous powerhouse to begin with that I don't, I, I didn't notice it as much. It, it was not choked out near as bad as another one that used to be my favorite, which is that little bugger right there, Tom Ford Tobacco Winning. It was not choked out anywhere near that. What we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna go ahead and do how we always do, and we're gonna show off the atomizer on this. Parfums de Marley uses very good atomizers. They're very pressurized, great center burst, Ah, I love this fragrance so much. And um, it's actually kind of funny how I came about to get this fragrance. I got this fragrance um, because of one of my best friends. He uh, he wore it to work one day, and I ain't gonna lie, gonna sound a little weird. I might have followed him around for about three quarters of the day, kept bugging him and asking him what he was wearing because it smelled amazing. And I will say to this day, that opinion on this fragrance has not changed at all, has not changed a bit. To me, when you first spray this, you get such a beautiful blend of fruity, tobacco, sweetness. There's like a muskiness to it. There's a warmth. Like this has everything that I could ever want out of a fragrance. And that's part of the reason why I love it so much. So now what we're gonna do is we're, we're now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get into the note breakdown. I'm gonna get this thing spin it up how we like to do, and I'll see y'all here in a second. Alrighty, as we get into this note breakdown on this one, the top notes on this are gonna be cinnamon and pepper, and that is pretty much gonna be everything that is gonna give this some of that spiciness that you get off of that. The cinnamon is very dominant in the opening sprays. The middle notes on this are gonna be tobacco, incense. Osmanthus and labdanum. As this one dries down, the labdanum to me, the tobacco and the incense is really what sets this one apart. It has a little bit of a hint of that mineralness to it, but it turns into such a beautiful smoky sweet. The base notes on this are gonna be vanilla, isoe super, cedar, musk, cypress, and vetiver. And the vetiver to me is what gives it a little bit of that darkness to it. The musk, the cedar, everything. The way this was blended up may be just an absolute perfect blend, but again, that is to me and my nose. So I'm gonna get this wrapped up. I'm gonna get y'all flipped back around and we will get into the rest of the breakdown. Alrighty, so I need no time at all to let this dry down because I pretty much can tell you everything I need to know about this fragrance. So for me, one of the things that I absolutely love about this fragrance is the way they use the tobacco and the incense. So when you first spray this, you do get some fruitiness, you do get a lot of sweet, you do get some of that tobacco, but there's a smokiness to it that I feel like is kind of what just pushes it over the top. Now, Parfums de Marly in the niche world, a lot of people don't like calling these niche because they're too, they're too mass appealing for what they are. To me, Herod is a little less mass appealing. It is a little bit more on the nose. Not a lot of people like that sweet incense tobacco type of fragrance. This, has, this does use like a vanilla and vetiver in some of the base notes. And that's what kind of gives it some of that like dark sweetness, I feel like. But the main thing that I love about this the most is the way that the fruitiness, it's like a smoked fruity tobacco. And I feel like that is what sets this one apart in my book as being like a top tier elite fragrance in my collection. It's just the, the way this thing is blended, the way this thing 
it doesn't have a huge change like some big crazy morph um, it does settle down just a little bit it does soften up just a little bit but it doesn't really have that much of a change once you hit about that 40 minute note the tobacco note gets a little bit stronger the incense just gets a little bit stronger it loses just a little bit of the sweetness not much but the main thing it loses from the top down is some of that fruity note the cinnamon that's on the top note of this it lingers through the dry down but it's not really presently known all the way on the base note so like you really don't even pick up a lot of better in this another thing you might notice this has is going to be labdanum but to me what labdanum does is it gives it a little bit of like a mineral vibe and that's almost what i feel like this one kind of needed to get it where it needed to be because it's it's something about it that just puts a little bit separation between this and some of the other ones and to me that's that's just why i went with this one so well like this this is such a beautifully blended fragrance that to me it's it's smooth it's sweet it's rich it's kind of dark so we're going to get into the performance side of this so performance wise a lot of people say that the new reformulated the new reformulation is a little bit weaker some people say it's incredibly weaker I do think that it's a little different. And when I mean it's a little different, it's the difference to me is almost negligible. Like it's because this, which one is this? So this is my OG. This is my original. I went out and sought out this bottle because I believed what some people were saying. They were talking about how intense some of the original fragrances was. So this one came from 2016. This is, which one is this one? This is my newest one. This batch came from 2021. Other than a little bit of performance, and I mean, they smell almost identical. They The performance is almost identical. But to me, it's not enough of a difference for people to kind of be blowing that out the way that they have done in the past. So um, for that reason, since if you were to buy a new one, whether from discount or space or anything, more than likely it's going to be this one. So I'm going to focus on this one which is the new reformulation. This, like I said, this bottle was 2021. The performance on this one is still rock solid. I get eight to 10 hours out of performance on this on my skin. That is more than enough to be an all day fragrance. That's somewhere in that five to seven spray range. Now I do like to refresh on this one. I don't think I necessarily have to. I like to do it because this is my favorite fragrance. I want this one to be loud. I want this one to be heavy. I want it to be bold. I don't wear this one that often because I don't want to road through it. But when I do wear it, I want it to be everything. I want it to be loud, bold, robust. I want it to smack people in the nose when I walk past them. But that's just me. That's it's that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Now the sillage on this in that five to seven spray range, the sillage on this is anywhere from two to four feet. It really depends. This one is very temperature driven. When it's cold, this thing is a monster. Now, the moment there's a little bit of moisture in the air, the moment that it gets a little warm, this does lose performance. But a lot of these thick, heavy base fragrances do that. On a normal cool day, this is two to four foot sillage, depending on where and how you spray. Projection on this one is very good. This one falls off the skin beautifully. It, it has, whenever you spray it, it has a little bit of that glistening on your skin. So your skin, this tends to set on the skin very well. That could be part of my problem trying to review this one is I'm incredibly biased toward this. And I'll admit that because like I said, I, this has everything I would ever want out of a fragrance. But part of the reason I'm biased is because I do love this fragrance so much. Everybody has those, everybody has those fragrances that they just love way too much. For me, that's this one, that's Herod. I will say that if you wanted to make this a potential signature scent, it's it's got enough gusto that it could be there. This is to me, this is a beautiful date night fragrance. I actually wear this one around my house more than anywhere else, just because I wear this one for me. My, luckily, I did get lucky. My wife does really love this fragrance as well. But for the most part, when I wear this one, it's for me. But yeah, so if I had to give this one a rating right now, I would give it an 11 out of 10. Favorite fragrance, not a whole lot more I could say to boast this thing up. There's literally nothing I would change about this. Even, even after the reformulation, to me, it didn't lose any of the scent profile. It didn't really lose anything. And I've seen a lot of people talking about these on the groups and stuff, talking about the older batches being stronger. Part of the reason they could be stronger is just because they've sat a little while. Sometimes when you let these things sit, they do get stronger. They do tend up to build up a little bit more steam. So for me, how I fall on that deal is, is they still smell pretty well identical. Their performance on my skin, 
pretty well identical. The newer, the older one, maybe just a little bit stouter, a little bit stronger, but it, this could stand to lose a few and it's still going to be everything I would ever want in a fragrance. Like I, that's, unfortunately, that's just how it fell with me. But I'm done ranting. I'm done raving. Uh, this video is actually a little bit longer than I wanted to make it. Sorry about that one. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get it on this bottle one more time. This is going to be Parfums de Marley Herod. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone for subscribing, for sticking around, for staying tuned, for sometimes listening to me rant on these. I kind of go off. I kind of go off on the side there sometimes. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so that is going to get us wrapped up. As always, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone for subscribing and we'll see you next time.